Good morning, Manhattan Beach. Great to be back. Uh, that was fun, Barry. I appreciate that. And I, uh, I have I, what I hope is a great uh, follow-on chat about the power of personal digital learning. I met these three young gentlemen uh, in, in the slums of Delhi last fall. And you can see they're um, bright-eyed, extraordinary young people and very eager to have their picture taken uh, with this tall white guy wandering the, the streets. Uh, and I had a great conversation with them. Uh, they spoke reasonably good English. They go to a government school. Uh, but here, here's the problem. They, they have huge class sizes and the teachers uh, don't show up on a very regular basis. Um, and so they're really not getting the preparation that they need. And so as fun as it was to see the, the fire in their eyes, uh, I thought to myself, there's not a very good chance that these three guys are going to connect to the idea economy. But here's the good news today. You and I can change that. So before they're in high school, we can create a, a terrific high school experience for kids like that in Delhi. We have challenges here in the United States as well. Uh, almost a third of our kids don't graduate. We've made a little bit of progress in the, in the 15 years that I've been working on that problem. But another third don't graduate from high school ready for college or career. So basically, two-thirds of US kids don't get what they, they need or deserve to be ready for the idea economy. And again, what I'm excited about is I think right in front of us, we have a chance to do better, a lot better. There are three main reasons that, that I'm so excited about personal digital learning, three variables that I think will change not just education but the world. The first one is customization. So for almost 15 years, we've been able to vary uh, rate, time, and location of learning. Uh, when I was a school superintendent, we launched uh, the first K-12 online school uh, in the United States. And, and we, we, we gave students the ability to learn when, where, and, and how uh, th they wanted to. But it was still kind of a single slog through a body of content, sort of a one-way path, right? What, what's changing now is customization. And th this is a picture of School of One in New York. It's an exciting math pilot program. And every student has a unique experience. So they walk into this big double classroom where they have a double period, and they'll see their name on a screen that looks like a, 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 an airport um, a terminal that shows you what gate to go to. And that will tell them which station they're going to start at. And some of them are learning online with a tutor. Some of them are learning at a game. And these students right in the foreground are in a small group instruction with a teacher. Let me describe that. So a teacher has prepared a lesson for six to eight students. But here's what's different than today. Each one of the students at that table is ready for that lesson. It's the right lesson on the right day in the right mode. And what a gift that is for kids and teachers, right? If they can walk in a room and know that they're ready to meet each other. To, uh, teachers feel much more successful in this kind of an environment. And at the beginning of the day, the teachers get to look at this dashboard and see the experiences recommended by a smart algorithm. And they can apply professional judgment uh, to, the, to the experience that kids are going to have. They can, they can jump in as they're doing up here and, and help out in, in a real-time fashion. So, it's a, an exciting example of how customization will improve learning per hour. So that's the net benefit, that more kids are going to learn more per hour when we teach them in the right way, at the right level, in the right modality. The second benefit is motivation. We're going to learn so much from casual game developers in, in particular. This is a picture of a Manga High which is a set of games developed by a casual game developer named Toby Rowland, uh, who sold a game company, retired, and began developing uh, educational games. And so like, like Saul Khan, who's, who's developed a, a terrific resource, this is a game-based version uh, of learning math. And there are other visual approaches to math that I think for many students are going to be so motivating. The net benefit will be that more students will learn more hours per day and more we'll be able to extend the day and the year because we'll do a better job of engaging kids uh, in learning the way they want to learn. So customization, motivation, 
the, 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 the big three is equalization. It's the transition that Barry talked about to one-to-one to -one computing. See all these kids in, um, in the South Bronx? See all the backpacks there? <laughs> the crazy thing that we do to middle school kids and loading them up with this giant backpack full of textbooks, right? And it no longer makes sense to do that. It's now cheaper to give them a tablet with, with great resources and connect every student like this one uh, to great content, to great teachers 24-7, 365. So the promise of, of equalization is that we'll lift the floor, that we'll close the digital divide for good, and that every student every day will have access to terrific educational opportunities. So let's talk about how this will happen. Online learning is growing much faster than most people think. So students that, that took an online course in the United States last year was about 4 million. By the end of this school year, by the second semester, it'll be about six million. By next fall, uh, it'll be eight million. It's growing uh, at at least 50% a year. So this is happening much more rapidly than any historical educational reforms have, have happened. And what that means is that more students are learning outside a traditional school, but I don't think it'll be much more than 10 or 15%. Most students are still going to learn at school, but it'll be learning online at a new kind of school. Uh, I call it a blended school. Here's, a, here's an example uh, in an unlikely place. It's a, a Yuma, Arizona. is a little border town where there's a terrific high school called Carpe Diem. There's 300 students that learn together uh, in, in an environment that mixes online and on-site, sort of the best of both worlds. So they spend about half their time uh, learning online with the support of a group of, um, uh, of lab supervisors, and they spend the other half of their time in these engaging Socratic seminars doing project-based learning. So the neat thing for teachers is that, uh, that each student has had good academic preparation for the Socratic seminars, and they're making these two forms of learning, online and on-site, work pretty well together. It's a good early example of blending the best of both worlds. Blended learning is, is different than educational technology. For 20 years, we've been layering technology on, on how we've always done school. But what's different about schools like, like Carpe Diem or, or Rocket Ship Elementaries in San Jose is that for at least a portion of the day, there's a shift in delivery to an online environment. And that's done to boost learning productivity, but also to, to, to make the school more productive, to allow a different kind of a, of a staffing model. So let's, let's go under the hood or behind the tablet and, and talk for two minutes about what's gonna make customized, motivating uh, learning possible. First of all, it's gonna be these big content libraries of, of both open and proprietary content. They'll, they'll be aligned in a lot of cases with the common core, and they'll sit on top of a, of a social layer, uh, one that looks like Facebook, that allows you to create groups really quickly, and has lots of apps, that tools for teachers and kids. It'll, it'll have a set of aligned services that go with it, student services, professional development for teachers, school improvement services, sort of an ecosystem of services. And the exciting thing is that uh, the 10,000 keystroke day that our kids are, are headed for, it's going to be captured in a data warehouse and we'll be able to create uh, smart recommendation engines that, that like School of One, queue up uh, a set of learning experiences. So just the right learning experience for your son or daughter, the right time, the right mode. Uh, and here's what, what I think uh, blends can look like. So. You, you may or may not have liked the picture that I showed you of Carpe Diem, but here, here's what the next Carpe Diem will look like. It, it will be the school of one, so think of a, a playlist on a tablet that your, your son or daughter has at home, sort of a customized learning experience that helps them build the knowledge and skill to participate in something that feels like expeditionary learning. So community-connected, project-based, highly social, highly engaged, that's the kind of schools that we, we ought to be aspiring to, places that engage hearts and minds and build uh, knowledge and skills. 
I met this young lady in the slums of Nairobi. Uh, it's called Kibera. There's about a million people that live in, in the most dire circumstances that I've ever experienced. The good news is that she attends a Bridge International Academy. There's about 50 of these super low-cost private schools. They cost about $4 a month, and they're getting U.S. levels of, of literacy. But there's not a high school for her. And I want to build a high school for this young lady. And I think you and I have the opportunity to do that. Right around the corner is the potential using inexpensive tablets and open content and these new low-cost blended school formats. I think we have the chance to build this young lady uh, an extraordinary high school experience that will connect her to the idea economy. That's why I think personal digital learning is such a big deal. We finally have a realistic chance of reaching kids from Newark to Nairobi and from Detroit to Delhi and, and creating for every kid on this planet uh, an, a, a very effective and engaging customized learning experience. Thanks. Thank you, John.